Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish Animation. This is Neon. We're going to do some some live drawing tonight. We're going to do, uh, I guess it's uh, uh, Elvik, who's a regular in here, said it was uh, Ink Ink Photober. And that's that's pretty much what it is. We're doing kind of kind of uh, uh, fake Inktober drawing. I am drawing on a tablet. I do tend to erase, and I'm not really drawing every day like I should. And the reason, the reason I'm not drawing every day is we get very, very busy. Um, but I guess in the spirit of Inktober, I'm just trying to, to draw a little more regularly and we're doing, uh, 1980s cartoon characters have, have been what I've been doing, uh, most of the month. So if you go back and check the archives, there actually are quite a few. We got like Cobra Commander, Rainbow Bright. I did Augur from the Dark Crystal, uh, droids, um, Smurf, Super Saiyan. It's confusing. Uh, hey everybody. Hey, 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 we got people coming in. So I guess, I guess the notifications are... Are working hello um so i think tonight i'm actually looking at my list of 80s characters and it's one i should have done a couple nights ago but i'm gonna do decompose from inhumanoids and he was my favorite inhumanoid now if you guys don't know what inhumanoids was it was uh, a hasbro cartoon show in the 1980s it had uh like giant um like giant cthulhu type monsters lovecraftian monsters versus guys in armor that was basically uh, that was basically what uh, it was. And I love Decompose. He was my all-time favorite. And I had him when I was a kid. And he was so cool. He had a rib cage that would open. You could put action figures in him. It was it was pretty awesome. I am going to do Ninja Turtles. Yeah, I want to get the Ninja Turtle arcade one-up machine. It's out. I saw people had it. So, hey, everybody. Um, all right. So, I'm going to start drawing. Before I start drawing, I want to give a shout-out to Print Ninja. I want to remind you guys, if you want to make your own comics or manga, uh, go out to Print Ninja and uh, tell them that Clownfish TV sent you, and they will give you 5% more books for free. So that's a pretty good deal. It could be like hundreds of dollars, uh, depending on depending on how many books you get. So, uh, yeah, hopefully I'm going to get to Ninja Turtles here soon. So again, I'm drawing on a Wacom Cintiq. Uh, this is a 13-inch HD Wacom Cintiq. I'm using uh, Clip Studio Pro. I guess this is the pro version, the paid version. And I use that for all my line art now and like all the comics covers and stuff I've done professionally. Um, I've been using this. Sometimes I do, sometimes I do a uh, uh, color in Photoshop, but uh, that's what I've been doing. So this is a draft layer for me. And All right, so we're gonna do some drawing here. Yeah, that works. Okay, let me get my blue pencil. I'm just gonna make a blue pencil and we are gonna draw Decompose. Yeah, the Star Wars one's really cool. It's really cool. Okay, so Decompose, I'm not sure exactly what he is. He's like, he's like a giant skeleton monster with like, he's got like a, almost looks like a cow skull head going on. Um, he's really cool though. And he was he was definitely my favorite in humanoid. I just wanted a chance to draw something a little a little morbid, I guess. But it's funny, like I actually can draw um, less or more detailed characters faster than I can draw less detailed characters. I think because you can kind of get away with you know being a little messy because you can just you know use cross hatching to cover it up or whatever. But with with you know car you know traditional cartoon characters, like every line counts. So let's do, let's do decompose here. And uh, he's basically, yeah, he's got like a cow skull going on. And he was probably one of the most like grotesque, uh, grotesque uh, action figures in the 1980s. And he didn't look anything like himself in the cartoon. He had like a crocodile head or a snake head in the, in the cartoon, which is kind of weird. But I'm going to make him look more like the action figure version, I think. Cause that's what I remember the most. I had him when I was a kid. This is a this is one Hasbro property I would love to see make a comeback. Hey everybody, have you seen Joker? No, I haven't gotten to see Joker yet. Everybody's like, "Why haven't you gone?" I'm like, "I've been too busy, too busy to go see Joker." I mean, we've been talking about it. I'm glad it's doing well, and I've heard nothing but but good things about it. But I, I honestly have not had time uh, to go see it because the movie theater showing it is like 
45 minutes from here. And then we're talking 45 minutes one way, uh, two or three hour film. And that means like way less videos um, for you guys. So, but I do need to, I do need to go see it. Um, I was hoping to go see it last week, but I just didn't have a chance to. Is this easier than drawing on pencil and paper? Uh, yeah, sometimes. You know, there's there's a now I will say that the Wacom tablets are better about this, but there's there's something about paper, like you know, feeling that pencil go across the paper, feeling the ink go across paper that you know, artists who've been doing it for a while can kind of you know, uh I don't know. You get like a feeling for like, if you're doing it right or not, I guess is the best way I could put it. Um, but cause you know, like how hard to push on the pencil and all that. And it's a little bit different with a tablet. Um, the Wacom's though are way better. I had a Yanova before and even with the iPads, like I have an iPad pro and I, I've done some drawing with that and it's okay. You know, it's okay, but it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel quite right. But I will say that the Yanova tablet or I'm sorry, the, uh, the Wacom tablet does kind of have that that rough texture to it so you get kind of a paper feel which is uh which is nice um and it you know you don't have any disconnect i, I forget what they called exactly but there's like a disconnect between the tip of your stylus and and you know where you're actually drawing on the screen and that was that was the one thing i really had a problem with with the unova tablet was you know, where my cursor would be, where my pen tip would be, would be like, you know, pretty far removed from where it was actually on the screen. And it just, it didn't work very well. So decompose is, yeah, I love this guy. I wish they'd bring in humanoids back somehow. I don't know if they, if IDW did a comic of it or not. I, I pretty much checked out of IDW. <laughs> like their comics started getting really weird. I used to work for them when their comics were getting weird. All right. So we're going to do. And he's got like his guts inside of his rib cage. I mean, he was definitely one of the, the more disgusting characters. All right. Hey everybody. Hey Nat. Um, yeah, digital lets you keep fixing and adjusting things. Traditional is really accurate. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. I, I think that's a pretty good way of putting it. Digital, I mean, it never it never feels a hundred percent like drawing for real. I mean, there's definitely something something missing. But the fact that you can make changes so quickly, the fact that you can, especially with comics. Uh, the fact that you can, you know, if a panel doesn't work, you can make changes to it quickly. You can just, you know, alter that panel or whatever. If, um, you know, like if you want to resize a character, like, you know, example, I'm kind of running kind of big with this guy. So I can just take this whole, you know, if I was doing this for real, uh, I wouldn't be able to do this. But I can just resize this guy, you know, and kind of like, oh, I didn't center him right. So let's let's do this over again. Now the the you know and again I'm cheating on October but <laughs> I don't care I pretty much I pretty much cheated on this whole thing all month but you know the trade off is I think for a lot of artists who weren't trained to draw uh, traditionally that having unlimited cheats it's sort of like you know only learning how to do math with a calculator and not being able to do it in your head if that makes sense um, I think there's definitely something to be said for you know, learning traditional hand-drawn art and learning to do it like the real way, if that makes sense. Um, so I would recommend, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna start drawing, to just you know pick up a pencil in paper and, and learn to draw uh, that way that way first I'm gonna have him like he's gonna be a little person here yeah he's gonna be eating a dude that's what he's doing that's what he's picking up and then you'll find when you draw digitally then a lot of you know the, the good habits I think that you picked up uh, doing it by hand you know you, you can transfer them over 
and you'll probably draw faster too because you'll be like well i know how to do this right the first time without having to constantly erase constantly having to you know trace over stuff um you know that's just my opinion though So this guy has got a lot of it's almost like in humanoids it's kind of like attack on titan before attack on titan i think it was like people versus giant giant creatures uh, they had like special weapons grappling hooks and all kinds of stuff it's a very cool show if you've never seen it you should definitely check it out but he has really got some crazy stuff going on but the nice thing about this since there's uh so much going on with him I can fudge a lot of it and I can just like throw down some details and you honestly wouldn't be able to tell if um, it was right or not. So, <laughs> kind of looks like a Skeksy, doesn't he? All right. When did I start drawing? Uh, probably about three or four. I mean, pretty much, you know, every kid, they start drawing when they're little a lot of times. Uh, but actually getting serious about it, I didn't really start getting, like, serious about wanting to draw or wanting to draw comics until I was in high school. Um, I mean, I read comics the whole time growing up, but I didn't realize you could actually, you know, make money at it until I was probably about 13 or 14. Now, my daughter, Pinky Boo, she's been drawing for a long time. She likes drawing comics, too. She's actually very good at it. She loves manga. And she was on the other night, so. But she's been drawing since she was really little, too. All right, so that's just my sketch. Now, normally I, you know, when I draw like for real, I do a really quick sketch kind of in, in blue line. And then I will, and I do blue because I'm, I'm used to that. Cause when, you know, drawing comics, the old way that they used to do it, they used to scan the comics in, or they would just, you know, uh, photo the comic uh, in a dark room or whatever. And that whole page to make a plate. And usually the artist drew in, uh, either very very light pencil or they drew in blue line so the camera didn't pick it up so the scanner didn't pick it up and uh, i just do it because again this is one of those things where you pick up if you draw you know for real it's just a kind of a force of habit because i know like okay that's my my sketch but the nice thing about drawing digitally is you can turn that off so uh, a lot of times i'll go over with um like a red pencil too for my final drawing and i do that because i don't want to confuse Again, just personal preference. I just don't want to confuse my pencil layer with my ink layer uh, and think that, you know, what's actually pencil is, is ink. So I'm going to switch out. I made another layer, and I'm going to get my black pen out. And I use a, a G pen on this, which I, I like. It's very thin or very thick. depends on how hard you press. And I'm going to make this a little bit... Um, a little bit dimmer and then I'm going to ink on this other layer here and there we go okay so some of these lines I'll probably get rid of and I'll definitely uh, add I'm sure I'll add lines to it um, just because now he was cool the toy of, of decompose he actually had a rib cage you could open and then you put the action figures inside the rib cage which is pretty neat he had like his own little uh, prison um it was a very cool very short-lived toy line and they had a cartoon series of it it was done by the same people who did gi joe and transformers and it actually took place i think in the same universe as gi joe and transformers because they had the one uh talk show host was um on all shows he was on transformers 
he was, I think it was Hector Ramirez. He was on Transformers, he was on G.I. Joe, and he was on um, Inhumanoids. He might have been on Gem, too. So I think the Hasbro universe was always kind of connected. I want to say it was Hector Ramirez. He was supposed to be like um, Geraldo Rivera, I think, back in the day. So, And this is like supposed to be all beat up bones. I can go in and now I can add like all kinds of nutty details and stuff to it because um, I can. And see, I kind of screwed this up. So that is the top. And this is the other rib cage there. And Okay. Now I'm gonna. He's got guts inside of his. I don't know. I'm gonna do that. All right. He's got some of his bones are cracked. His ribs are cracked. It really is a cool toy. If you go look at look him up, uh, decompose from Inhumanoids. Um, he's very very cool. And I think he goes for a lot of money now too. I kind of wish I wouldn't have sold mine. Okay. You just basically just kind of go in and add detail you know, wherever you want to, and um, you know, it's actually like I said, I'm quicker drawing uh, details like this than I am doing simpler stuff, and I, I don't really understand why. I think it's because you don't have to be so precise, so I can just kind of like throw down all kinds of crazy lines. Now these are quick sketches. I, I usually do spend a lot more time, uh, obviously, on like actual comics projects and stuff. But Neon knows about oh, geeky is in the chat. Neon knows about cracked ribs. Yeah, I, I have. I've actually got uh, ribs I've cracked like three times the same same rib. I think uh, I cracked it when I was about twenty. I landed I landed on my side on the ice, and then um, Squid King actually cracked my ribs when he was little. Uh, he head butted me. Um, he was playing. He was just messing around, but he actually cracked my ribs and then I forget what happened after that but I have I've got like my ribs on one side are really weak so okay
Mm -hmm. Carl Singer remake of Matt Tracker from Mask. Yeah, Visionary, they I know they they redid Hasbro kind of redid some of that. They were gonna do like a Hasbro verse or something and they were gonna make movies. And it never happened. Now they're doing the Snake Eyes movie. Um, but I don't I don't think IDW has anything to do with that. And I don't think those books I don't think any of those books really sold that well. Because they wound up rebooting Transformers anyway. And it's actually selling better now, I think. So he's basically just a big zombie with like a alligator head or something. Never really explain it. Sure, he smells delightful. Hmm. And sometimes I'll just like, so you can turn that blue layer off and you can see the ink lines in. I can just like paint buckets and this stuff. You always thought he kind of looked like a knockoff of the, uh, oh crap, what's his name? Is it Eddie from Iron Maiden? Um, the dude from Iron Maiden, because I mean, this was you know back in the '80s and heavy metal was big, and I think that's where Decompose kind of came from. going on in the chat here one second I'm almost done with this guy already just kind of like I said I actually can draw more detailed stuff faster um, than the simpler stuff and I, I don't know why oh man I'm sorry to hear that slithering peanut yeah I um I actually have had uh well, I have I had like multiple ruptured discs, and I had uh, a couple of years where I couldn't walk very well, um, and uh, I had one leg. I had my one leg was actually numb from uh, the knee down, and um, you know it's it's uh, definitely definitely not easy. Yeah, I had to work on my stomach. I mean, thankfully, I worked at home. Um, but if I had to go work a day job, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have been able to do it. There's just no way. But I was working as a 
um, web developer, uh, webmaster, and I could work at home. But yeah, I had to like lay on my stomach to, to work. It was it was pretty awful. That went on for like almost two years. Oh no no we don't want the chat to get depressing. Let's not get depressing. Uh let's let's uh let's talk about this this guy here who's uh eating this little person. That's always a good time. That's always a good time. All right. So he's going to I don't know who he's eating. Don't know. And again, this is a very kind of quick and dirty sketch. Uh, usually I would spend a lot more time, but again, it's, you know, the spirit of Inktober is supposed to draw pretty quick, I guess. So um, this is. much quicker than I usually draw something like this. And then, let me see here. Oh, here comes the train. Now, the decomposed action figure was actually really cool. Uh, when I was a kid, I used to like spend hours looking at him because he had all these crazy little details. Like, there were like like maggots crawling around on him and stuff. Like there's all kinds of crazy stuff on this action figure. I mean, he was definitely, I think one of the top, the top 1980s toys, action figures. Uh, it's definitely one of the best ones Hasbro's ever done. And, um, if you can ever track one down just to look at him and just, you know, taking all the detail, it's definitely worth it. I mean, it was kind of like, he was almost like a McFarlane figure before McFarlane was a thing. I think these were made in like 86 or 87. All right, so let me, um, gonna do my cheap, cheap background, 90s Marvel background here. Knock that off. Well, oh, that's not right. Can't paint bucket if you have gaps. There we go. And my uh, cheesy, cheesy cross hatching here. Okay, I'm just going to thicken up some lines here, and I think I'm pretty much done. This is uh, decomposed from Inhumanoids. Um, definitely definitely worth um, checking out. I think they, I think most of the episodes are actually on YouTube, I want to say. If you've never seen the show, it's, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool concept. It's like Lovecraftian sci-fi. And, uh... Oh, hit the like button, yeah. Oh, Slytherin Peanut. I've looked at the rules, and it doesn't say anywhere you can't erase. Okay, well, then I'm not technically 
cheating as much as I thought it was. <laughs> Thank you for looking into that because I felt really bad. It's like, I don't really care. This is Inktober our way. We do everything uh, our way over here at Clownfish. We don't uh, really listen to the rules. We don't need rules. All right, so we're going to view fit the screen. There we go. You guys want to look up close. And again, these are quick sketches. These aren't meant to be like, you know, cover worthy or anything. I mean, I draw these things in like a half an hour or so. Um, decompose from inhumanoids. Okay, well, it's good It's good to know. We're going to do more with the animation. We're just trying to figure out where we're going to go. Um, so, no, I haven't seen Joker yet. I need to see Joker. I need to go see it. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. It's appreciated. Uh, hopefully, we'll get to do some more drawing this week. Again, it just depends on depends on what kind of time we have. You know, we've been very busy lately. So, uh, always, always uh, appreciate it. Make sure you guys are still subscribed. Um, spread the word. You know, we're going to be doing some drawing. We're just keeping it on another channel. All right, so... See you guys later.